Never let anybody see you sweat. So I was born in New York City and I lived there until I was eight years old. I realized that I was a much better talker than I was a listener. I don't know what to say, I just don't like what you're saying. Sorry, Your Honor. I ended up going to law school at Georgetown and I was a prosecutor for Janet Reno. I loved it because it was so raw. Were you cheating on her? Yeah, sure. Okay. All rise. Our show will be a mixture of education. I think you're misreading the law a little bit. And entertainment. <laughs> my main goal is justice and the law. That's been my legacy and the legacy I hope to continue into the future with the show. Olivia Hill claims the food at her godson's baby shower was ruined after her neighbor mowed his lawn, getting grass clippings everywhere. Dave Brown says Miss Hill didn't give him any notice, so he's not to blame. Okay, Miss Hill, you're suing your neighbor, Mr. Brown, for $832, the cost of a baby shower you say he ruined. Yes. All right, what's going on here? So, Your Honor, he has been a pain in my side ever since I moved into the neighborhood. I moved in about a year and a half ago, and I bought a fixer-upper house, so I had to do a lot of renovations. I had to redo the bathroom. I had to redo the kitchen. I had to knock out a wall to make the living room bigger. Um, there were a couple of Saturdays where I had to just have those two Saturdays workable because um, having I had a pool built in my backyard, and so are you allowed to do construction in your town on a Saturday? That's my question. Yes, on a Saturday I'm allowed to, just not on Sundays. Okay. Again, since I moved in, it seems like he had a problem with me. Just when what I started. What makes you say that he had a problem with you? Um, he would always, when he, when I first met him, he was really just trying to come and tell me all the rules of the neighborhood and, uh, you know. Like what? Oh, uh, you don't have too many cars, um, the noise level for this, make sure you take your trash cans in at this time. Um, I like to host events, and especially since I have my pool in my back, um, I would host a lot of events. And How many people would you have over? I would say about 10 to 20 people. Okay. Uh, every time I would host an event, he would find some kind of way. First, I would see him in it, like maybe looking out in the backyard or find some way to be in the backyard, and then all of a sudden, he would have to mow his lawn. And after the third time, I asked him, I'm like, hey, you know, I've noticed that you seem to be mowing your lawn every time, every time I'm throwing an event. All right. And you, what was it? It was a baby so shower? So it was a baby shower for one of my closest friends. The child is my godchild. Uh -huh. And um, so it was, of course, a little bigger than my usual events, maybe about 40 to 50 people. Okay. Um, and I... I had a lot of things going on. I had decorations, of course. We played games at the baby shower. I had games and prizes and everything. And I had a DJ and I had food catered. Um, there were a lot of things I paid for, Your Honor. I'm just asking for the money back for the DJ and for the food because- Because what? Because it was ruined by him mowing his lawn at the particular time that I was having my event. I previously discussed with him that when he mows his lawn, the pollen, the grass clippings that comes over, our gate is only three feet. So it all comes over to my yard. He waited until I put the food out in the backyard, put everything, all the food out, and then had moments you, later. You had texted him that morning and said, can I see the text? Do you have the text? I do. I have the text. Yeah, let me see. I want to. Thank you. Hi, Dave. I'm going to be hosting a baby shower in the backyard today, 12 to 5. I would really appreciate if you would not mow your lawn during that time. Olivia, I will see if I'm able to accommodate that. I also have plans today and cannot guarantee it'll work with your time frame. Okay, I would really appreciate it. It's a very important day. Then at 1.11, Dave, I'm asking you again, please mow your lawn at a different time. It's causing grass clippings and pollen to get into my yard while I'm hosting. Thank you. His answer, Olivia, sorry if it's an issue for you, but just like your construction bothered me at times, I guess this bothers you. Sometimes as neighbors, we just need to put up with things. For example, I put up with listening to your home construction on the weekends. To which you respond, I had a feeling you were intentionally doing this because of my construction. Wow. Yeah. Uh, were you? No. Um, I, it's, it's, how mad you're... can you get over, over <laughs> someone doing construction? It's kind of... Uh, that's kind of permitted, right? Like, I know how Ups, deafening up. and annoying and everything it can be. Mm -hmm. But if it's within the parameters of whatever your town permits, then there, you really have no, what is it you want her to do? Not construct on the, 
place? No, absolutely. There are totally times and, and, and regulations for when she can construct, and she was doing that Monday through Friday. When it started to bleed through the weekend, that's when I started to have a problem with it. Well, here's my question, though. She, mm -hmm. she says that in her town she can build on Saturdays. Some towns you can, and some towns, towns you cannot. Mm -hmm. Do you have any evidence to suggest that she cannot, or any, any, any copies of any laws to suggest she was violating anything? Did you ever call building and zoning and say, hey, illegal activity next door, construction on a Saturday, any of that ever happen? Uh, I just didn't understand why it needed to when it was going on for a year because already. Because sometimes you're not in control of your construction. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you ever done any construction? Coming up on Justice for the People. Let me tell you how it works. They say, I'm going to be there on your birthday, and you say, thank you, sir, may I have another? That's kind of how it works. So sometimes you're not really in control of, of that kind of thing. And later. Uh, in the workplace, some people were doing some practical pranks and everything and eating each other's lunches for the past three weeks. Who started eating whose lunches? That's uh, pretty rude. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with the case of Olivia Hill, who blames Dave Brown for ruining a baby shower by spitefully mowing. No, let me tell you how it works. They say, I'm going to be there on your birthday, and you say, thank you, sir, may I have another? That's kind of how it works. So sometimes you're not really in control of, of that kind of thing, all right? But in any event, and I say this, my father was a contractor. My brother is a contractor, and I have had both my father and my brother do mm -hmm. work on my homes, and it was it was hard. And those mm -hmm. are people who ostensibly I can control because they're my father, my father and my brother, and it's just hard. This is a tough industry. Um, too many moving parts. I totally understand that. My grandfather right. built houses on his own. I totally get it. Okay, so was she throwing loud parties? Um, I, they weren't loud, but okay. they would happen and they were on the weekend. That's also my only free time as well. And I enjoy the upkeep of my, of my home. Are you allowed to mow on Sundays? There's no, nothing against nothing mowing preventing on Sunday. It. No. Okay. Are you allowed to mow shirtless? There are some towns that prevent that. There's no, nothing against I, that. Isn't that so? <laughs> All right. Um, she had texted you and said, I'm mm -hmm. having a party. The neighborly thing would be to wait until the next day to mow your lawn, right? It's not that hard. Why was it that hard for you? I had already had set plans for the day to, um, for the weekend um, that I was dealing with. That I, if she had texted me well in advance, especially for a baby shower, like that seems like such an, a huge event that could have been told to me a week, a month in advance, and I would have been able to feasibly move around things to make sure that that wasn't going to happen. But to text me a couple hours before it happens, when I've already had um, things I was going to be doing that weekend, mm -hmm. it made it far harder to accommodate with what she wanted from me. Do you think she's inconsiderate of you? I think she's inconsiderate of most of our neighbors. Because of the construction? A, a lot of it, yeah. I mean, she, she had, it just went and went and was... <laughs> Incredibly loud, waking up to um, drilling and hammering and no, I digging know it's in the backyard. But she has a right to beautify her place. It, it, it makes your property value go up. So, you know, I mean, it, it's a, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Sometimes that takes long, but um, you mad at her because of the construction? This was never a repercussion of the construction. When I said that it was an example, it was an example. Sometimes those things happen on the weekend, then I want you to know that when I'm going to mow my lawn, it's also going to be on the weekend. And okay. How, uh, how do you figure that I should make him pay $832 to chip in for the baby shower that you threw because the guy did what? Mow his lawn? Yeah, he mowed his lawn. But isn't honor. that a risk you run when you have a garden party that, and you ask the guy, hey, don't mow your lawn. To, you inform the guy, please don't mow your lawn between these hours today. I'm having a party. Like, you know, you don't have a right for him not, just like he doesn't have a right to stop your construction if it's legal, you don't have a right to stop his mowing a lawn. That's a risk that you run when you throw a party inches away from his lawn, um, right? So if uh, you don't like the noise, or the clippings, then you take the party inside. Sure, Your Honor, but at that point, 
and he, like I said, as soon as I put the food out, he has a long lawn, Your Honor. He could have started at the total opposite end of his lawn. He starts right near the food, Your Honor. Like, Were your people there yet? Yeah, my people were there, and he okay. starts right near the food. And so one of my guests went to go get some food, and it had grass clippings all over it. Don't put the food so close to the next yard. Well, you know, where we sat, I felt like he, where we, where I sat the food. Here's a he, problem. He, he thinks your property belongs to him, and you think his property belongs to you, and you're both wrong. Each of your properties belong to you respectively, okay? Because each of you have a right to make noise on your property. Each of you has to tolerate the noise the other person makes, unless it exceeds the boundaries of the law. Like, you're not allowed to construct on Sunday and you're doing it. Or like, you're not allowed to mow after midnight and he's doing it. Those are the only things you have rights to complain about. Anything else is stuff y'all got to work out among yourselves. And if no one's being neighborly and friendly, for example, you're not giving sufficient notice because you weren't organized enough, you're not requesting the right way because you catch more flies with honey, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if... If, if that's the way it's going to be, then these are the results you're going to get. You know, y'all have to look at, you better buy 20 acres somewhere if you don't want neighbors. Because uh, until you do, the plane doesn't belong to you. So if a baby's crying, shut up. Okay. And, you know, this doesn't, his property doesn't belong to you either. And your property doesn't belong to him. You have to learn to coexist. Okay. So, no, he's not going to pay for part of your baby shower. Not one part, not another part, not any part. Um, and let me tell you that I'm not stupid. I kind of think he might have done it on purpose, too. And I think he might have done it on purpose because he doesn't like how you spend a year and a half making noise with no warning or anything else, working Saturdays without telling him, hey, I'm really sorry, the pool guy has to come on Saturday. And then you send him a text at 8 in the morning and tell him, I'm going to need you not to mow between 12 and 5. Yeah, I'm, that may be what set it off. Uh, verdict for the defendant. All rise. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is denied. I'm glad the judge was able to make a correct decision on this case. It's not hard to be a good neighbor. It, it's not. And he, I don't know what his problem is, but I hope he gets over it. Coming up. It got to the point where my own food was stolen. Are you kidding me? That's hard to believe, I know. Would uh, you label it boss? Like, did you, maybe not boss, but did you label it with your name? This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. John Stevens claims he was the only one terminated after he participated in an office lunch prank. Richard Thompson says he warned all of his employees that game time was over, but the plaintiff's antics didn't stop. Okay, Mr. Stevens, you are suing your former employer, Mr. Thompson, mm -hmm. for $6,600 the remainder of your contract because you feel you were unfairly fired. Yes. And you had a short-term contract. What was your business? What were you doing for that term? S so I was doing logistics for truck shipments, um, like doing time stances, uh, time stamps when people were unloading or loading onto the truck. And I was fired about two and a half months into my contract. All right. So what happened? So uh, in the workplace, some people were doing some practical pranks and everything and eating each other's lunches for the past three weeks into my contract. The first month. Lunches. Who started eating whose lunches? That's uh, pretty rude. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know, Your Honor. Well, did your lunch get stolen? Yes. Yes, Your All Honor. All right. And did you steal other people's lunches? Only out of retaliation when someone stole my lunch. Okay, <laughs> but someone stole your lunch how many times? Once? Uh, three times. What's going on? Like, what kind of place are you running here? Uh, Everyone's a thief. You need to fire everybody. All right, so now you end up feeling like you have to get involved, and what do you do? Well, I thought it would take care of itself. I have adult employees. I have no children employees. No, I'm not sure, but go ahead. <laughs> and it got to the point where my own food was stolen. Are you kidding me? That's hard to believe, I know. Would uh, you label it boss? Like, did you, maybe not boss, but did you label it with your name? It's a sandwich my wife makes me. I have a special paper. People know which wrapping paper that is. Okay. It's the boss man's okay. wrapping paper. And now I'm personally involved in this. Yeah, now it's gonna, that, that, yeah. that's where you draw the line. Coming up. Did you steal any food between February 24th and March 10th? Uh, it was. Go, wait a minute. I'm waiting to hear him, his answer. You can put your hand down. I don't need a drum roll.
This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with the case of John Stevens, who brought his former boss, Richard Thompson, to court for firing him over a prank. The boss can't eat, no one eats. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I actually sent a, an official email. Okay. Which sounds to all silly of your to write an email regarding sandwich stealing. I have that as can well. Can I see that? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, like this needs saying. <laughs> Dear all employees, please refrain from stealing coworkers' food. I've been made aware of the stealing of food via your notes, and this is not acceptable in the workplace. Additionally, my food has gotten stolen, and I do not appreciate it. Our company aims to be preventive towards hostile environments, and these actions may have severe consequences. Richard, CEO. All right, did you get that? Yes, I did, Your Honor. All right, and when did you get fired? I got fired March 10th okay. of last year. And did you steal any food between February 24th and March 10th? Uh, it was... Go, wait a minute, I'm waiting to hear him, his answer. You can put your hand down, I don't need a drum roll. Go ahead. So it was, only, it was only one last time. You tried stealing food one more time, what happened? You got caught? So, yes, I did get caught. Are you right. the catcher? Yes, Stand I up, am. please, let me hear from you. What's your name, sir? Uh, your Honor, my name is Wendell Davis. I was just, it's a normal day, I, I just, it's time for lunch. Okay. So I went back into the refrigerator, just, you know, and I let me double check. And then yours was missing, and then and what do missing. you say to him? And I go and I'm like, Hey, you're eating my food. And what did he say? Well, how did I know you didn't eat my lunch? That's what he said? So he basically admitted that he was eating your food? Yeah. How so, do I know that you're not the guy who ate my lunch two months ago? So um, the boss warns that shenanigans are over, and then you do it again, and then you get fired, and then you're surprised. I don't think it was justified. I dealt the self-consequences. I thought it was maybe like I have to work in the bathroom and I have to like scrub the toilets or something like that. That's what oh, I well, thought. Well, I guess you misjudged what I miss I did misjudge it. Right, so how does he have to pay you? Judge Millian's verdict when justice for the people returns. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. He actually says there's going to be severe consequences if this doesn't stop. And what? You're gauging how severe they're going to be? Because he sounds pretty angry in the email. I mean, uh, how old are you? I'm, I'm 22. Yeah. I guess you learned a lesson. I, I did learn did a lesson. <laughs> yes, okay, I did. Okay, well, keep your hands to yourself. I'm so, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, keep your hands to yourself. Yeah. Because uh, I, I am less shocked by you stealing and food and thinking it's funny, even though that's shocking than I am by you stealing food after the boss says there's gonna be grave consequences, but I am most shocked by you coming to court and then suing. You literally filed a case in court to sue because you feel it was an unjust firing. Why do you think he fired you if it's not that you're a thief? after he told you not to be, like that needed saying. Because I felt like other coworkers were also doing it as well. They were, they were, they did continue. Do you have any evidence that anyone, after the boss said, enough of this stuff, no more notes, no more stealing, do you have any evidence that anybody else engaged in it? Uh, no, I do not, Your Honor. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna go home without lunch and without your $6,600. Verdict for the defendant. All rise. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is denied. Honestly, I think you fired the wrong man, and I still feel it's unjust, and I hope you can find a better employee than me. Well, I'm sorry it came to this. I hope you can learn from this, this situation. There's a lot of fish in the sea, and I caught you. Okay. Exit this way, please. Make sure you grab all of your belongings. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.